Well, hey there, good afternoon. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. Today we're coming from my man cave shed in my backyard in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And this episode, we're going to be talking about combining typewriters with other forms of writing. Now, I had shot some footage in Tucson, Arizona a few weeks back, and we did several episodes of the series there. I have one final episode from the Tucson trip that I'm going to be showing you today, but I wanted to make a few more observations and comments. So, talking about combining typewriters with other forms of writing. Um, first of all, today I'm using my little brother-made Webster XL747 typewriter. It's a nice little portable job. And one of the things that I noted about the writing methodology is you're not always wanting to be using a typewriter. It's just impractical to, to take one everywhere, even though we've talked about you know using typewriters and, and as portable writing devices. But one of the most common ways that I like to write is I carry these little handmade little notebooks. I call them neat notebooks. They're made from um, typing paper and cardstock, and they're small enough that I can literally fit them in my wallet. And I always have one in my wallet. Okay, along with the wallet and the t and the notepad, I have a Fisher Space Pen. And when it's capped, it's short enough that I can put it sideways in the bottom of my pocket with my wallet, and it never falls out. And so, combining this Fisher Space Pen with a little notepad means that I can always make notes wherever I'm at, even if I don't have a typewriter or a laptop computer or anything else. Now, what I've noticed works really well about with this method is in this writing method, I'm not going to be writing extensive uh, pieces, uh, extended essays or whatever with this, this method. This is like short observations, little notes, uh, quick little remembrances that can help jog my memory later on. So I write things down. I have ideas. Just a little note, a short little line, a little bullet or whatever. And later, when I go back to where I'm at, whether it's home or if I'm on a trip, the hotel room or the bed and breakfast or wherever, wherever my typewriter is, I can take these notes that I've created, just like uh, memory aids, and with the typewriter then, I can actually create a more complete piece um, with these notes as, as a cue for my memory. Okay. So that's one way that you can combine the typewriter with other forms of writing. Now, the question might be, why use the typewriter at all? Why not just write on a notebook, write like this? Well, I find um, typewritten text archives much better. Uh, my, t my handwriting is terrible, but having a typewritten piece I can put in a three-ring binder, and years later I can go back and read it, and it's just more legible. Right? It's a more finished form. Now, there's another way to write, and I'll sometimes bring this little uh, portfolio binder with me. And the portfolio binder, I carry a pad of Staples brand sugarcane pulp paper. This paper works really well with fountain pen ink, and I really do enjoy writing with fountain pens, and I usually carry several with me. The fountain pen that I've been using lately is this Twisby brand, and it's a clear fountain pen. And it is a. It doesn't use cartridges. It uses. Uh, uh, it's a piston fill. And you, what you do is you dip the tip in a bottle of ink, and you twist the back of the pen, and it draws the ink up into the body of the pen, and it holds a lot of ink. Um, I like the Parker Blue Black ink uh, is what I really like, and I also use a red ballpoint pen. So for corrections and editing. So the combination of the, the blue-black ink with red corrected ink is a real neat way to do writing. I also discovered that Twisby makes this glass ink well that you can pour your bottled ink into and it has a conical plastic receptacle in the middle of the bottle that you take the cap off you, or before you take the cap off, <laughs> you tip the bottle upside down and back up, and it fills the center conical receptacle with ink. And then you can dip your fountain pen nib into that receptacle and fill the pen up, even when there's only a little bit of ink left in the bottle. So it's a really good way to make your fountain pen bottled ink last and go long. Okay. 
So I like writing with fountain pens, but really I only write with them out in the field when I have my portfolio book with me because I just don't like carrying fountain pens normally with me. But for short, quick note taking, I have a little homemade notebook and a Fisher Space pen. I always have these with me all the time and it's really super portable. So you're making notes out in the field, you bring it back, and then you can do a more complete work on your typewriter. Okay, So that kind of works for me as, as a writing method. I might also mention that when I'm home and I want to do some typing, um, sometimes typing can be irritating or can be bothersome to other people around the house. Um, and so there's a tradition of having a writer's shed. And now this is more of a tradition, I suspect, uh, over in England and maybe back in New England and in the eastern part of the United States, but it, it is kind of a tradition to have a writer's shed set apart from the house where you can just go to, set yourself aside, make a little space for you like this one, and where you can write uninterrupted. And I'm going to cover the writing shed or the man cave shed in, a, in another episode of the typewriter video series. But for now, let's cut to the footage that I shot in Tucson, Arizona, where we talk about using typewriters with other forms of writing. I hope you enjoy it. Today we're uh, located in the Sonoran Desert west of Tucson, Arizona at the Cricket Head B&B. And today's topic is going to be fitting in typewriters into a larger lifestyle of writing. Now in previous episodes I've discussed um, some of the aspects of traveling with typewriters, the kinds of machines you might want to take, whether they're ultra portables or uh, medium-sized portables or both. Um, some of the aspects of uh, using typewriters in public as, so as not to bother other people, some of the aspects of finding places to type that is conducive to creativity while not bothering other people, um, how to use the typewriter in a makeshift setting when you don't have a formal desk or table. Well today I'd like to talk about the idea that typewriters, as a, as a writer, typewriters work well with other forms of writing. So for instance, um, one of my favorite methods of rough draft writing is fountain pen on, onto a uh, legal pad. Okay? Um, I like writing in that style because the fountain pens are very conducive to uh, quick uh, fluid handwriting, even though my handwriting is virtually illegible by anybody else but myself. But still, I like uh, the use of fountain pens. And I typically will edit my writings, typically as I go. I write using fountain pen, typically in blue-black ink, and I carry a red ballpoint pen and I will use the red pen to mark my edits as I go, either spelling mistakes or you know sentence structure, kind of wordsmithing as I go. But I typically end up with some piece of handwritten material that is kind of scratched through and scribbled with both blue and black ink, uh, blue and red ink. And so that's a very good way for me to write because I get to sit down and craft every sentence in a better way than I can even typewriting, uh, first draft typewriting, because with handwriting it's a little more fluid in terms of being able to insert corrections between the lines and scratching through things. It's just a little easier. But obviously these first draft uh, scribblings aren't really a good way to archive your writings. And it's nice to see them transition from this first draft rough, very rough form into something that's a little more formal and polished. So I find if you have a problem either traveling with two typewriters, as I mentioned in the previous video about um, using a medium size and an ultra portable, if you have a problem with carrying two, type, two such typewriters, or if you have a problem with uh, typing in public. Maybe there are no really conducive uh, places to do that quietly. 
uh, then you might want to consider handwriting as a really good way to first draft your writings. But when you get back to your domicile, your hotel room, your bed and breakfast, or wherever you're staying, then the typewriter becomes a really good way to make those uh, rough drafts a little more permanent and formal. Um, this is where it's good to type them in a one and a half or two line spaced format um, on, on your, your good typing paper. Uh, what I usually do is I find myself, of course, as I'm writing by hand, I do correct as I go, wordsmith, sentence structure, things like that. But then I find myself, as I'm transcribing my writings from handwritten form to type form, sometimes I will see corrections that need to happen, and I will do those corrections um, even though I've already wordsmithed it, I can, I can make further corrections. Somehow I'm able to see the need for the, for the sentence structure to be changed or whatever a little bit easier as I'm typing it for some reason. So the typing process is conducive, for me at least, it's conducive for further editing. So I do a little bit of editing as I'm transcribing also, a little change in revision. And so that, f that typed version becomes, uh, becomes the form of the work that, that you can progress from afterwards. So anyway, there is this, uh, there is a symbiotic relationship, I think, between typewritten work and handwritten work. And both of those methods work together well. So that's my little uh, piece for today uh, from the Sonoran Desert in uh, southern Arizona, how, how to fit typewriters into a larger writing lifestyle. This is Joe Van Cleve, and you have yourself a great day.